Uh, my name is Kelvin Johnson. Um, I am the brand owner, the CEO of my custom alteration brand I call, called Cop What You Want, CWYW. Um, I'm a senior, um, either at the University of Tennessee Knoxville or University of Memphis. I don't know which one I'll be finishing at, but I have 12 hours left. That's that on that. Um, I started this brand, uh, it'll be a year ago this Friday. Today's the 10th. I started it on the 12th of June of last year. Call What You Want is, uh, so my main motto is it's not a brand, it's a statement. Obviously it is a brand, but cop is a, is a, is a, a urban slang term that we use in our language. Uh, and when I say our, our language, I mean African-American slang, uh, urban slang as people like to call it. A uh, cop just means to get something that you like, uh, to get it. Yeah, I cop that girl because I wanted that girl. You know what I'm saying? I cop that bag. I cop those shoes. So cop what you want is just, you know, since I'm a custom alteration brand, I think it fits the best with, you know, cop what you want. Tell me what you want and I want to be able to have the ability to give it to you. And the more people cop what they want, the more people will want to cop what they want. So I feel like that's, that's a nutshell in that. So this is, um, I'll show you a quick, quick snippet really quick. This is a little Uzi, this is a little Uzi uh, double-sided jacket. It just came out with an album called Eternal to Take. And right now I'm on my last step on this sleeve. Uh, so the Eternal to Take jacket, he came out with a regular version. Then he came out with the deluxe version. This is the cover for the regular version. And this is the cover for the deluxe version. So the album is called Eternal A Take. I put Eternal on this sleeve and I put uh, a take on this sleeve. On this sleeve, since it's the darker side, I put all of the songs from the original album in white. And then on the deluxe side, I'm gonna put all the songs on the deluxe uh, side in color. And then I'll be done with this. I put an extra pocket on it because this side of the jacket didn't have a pocket. I sold two different jackets together. And uh, this is one of my one year anniversary pieces that I am making. It's gonna be quite pricey. I think I'm gonna price it at like 350. So my custom jackets now cost 250. But if it's something that I made and this is a one year anniversary piece where I put a lot of time into it, this isn't just one of my regular pieces. Uh, it's gonna be 350 and then Another jacket I'm going to show you guys later is going to be 352. What does art mean to me? Art is a lifestyle, man. It's, it's, uh, it's a statement. Like I said, it's not a, not a brand, it's a statement. Art is a statement. Anybody can be an artist. Um, art is just you putting your passion into something and creating art with it. That's what I really feel like art is. Art can be in any form or fashion. You can make art with making food, painting, um, anything breathing swimming <laughs> basketball anything can be an art it's just anything you put your passion into so that's what i truly think art is i started designing maybe yeah probably probably last year i know i always i've always liked uh dressing up in different types of clothes um, for the most part like ever since I was about 13 that's when I got like a my first little job I was bringing in my own little money I could go like cop <laughs> my own uh, pieces of clothing also my sister wanted to be a fashion designer when I was younger too which is really weird like I've done everything that she wanted or has done she worked at shoe stores I ain't working at shoe stores she was a tutor I was work I was a tutor um, she wanted to be a fashion designer now I design clothes uh, but it's I don't know, she's one of the people that I really truly look up to, so I feel like I'm just living our life together. But yeah, I was always going to my alteration lady in like 2017, 2018 for like my pants. Uh, I was doing what I was doing now, going to thrift stores, finding pants that I liked, but they couldn't fit me, I would get my alteration lady. But me doing clothes myself, probably when I got out of the hospital in February last year. I just needed something to keep my mind de-stressed and out of trouble and out of the hospital, so that's when. All right, all right. So Stu asked me to pick three of my favorite pieces that I currently had on me. Uh, these are all coming out on the one year anniversary this Friday, uh, 6-12-20, it's currently 6-10-20. 
Uh, you want to start with the shirt. You want to start with blazers, jean jacket, or cactus jack? Uh, it's up to you. I want you to pick one. You want, ooh, okay, okay, you wanna start off with the heat, say less. So the Cactus Jack is a one year anniversary piece. I started with the back. This is Highest in the Room, one of my favorite Travis Scott songs that he made. It's really short, really simple. It's like two minutes and 30 seconds. A lot of people don't like it. I love it, I love the visuals for it and just the thought of it. Uh, obviously he's capitalizing on being high and uh, or being inebriated. And then he's putting his inebriation not only in drugs, but he's saying that a girl gives him a high. And I feel like he was talking like about Kylie, uh, Kylie Jenner. And uh, I feel like, you know, I can relate to that. She fine as hell. I I'll be high off her too. But this is how I started. I started with the highest in the room. And then I found this sick, sick leather material uh, at Goodwill uh, for $4. And I made these Travis Scott patches and put them on. And then I also made the Cactus and Jack out of the same leather material. That's his name, Cactus Jack. And then with the front, I painted his face on it, uh, his actual face on it. Put another patch. I don't know if you can see this black uh, cross right here, but this is just that material, but I painted it black. And then there's a Cactus on Fire, Butterfly, he loves butterflies. And then of course, my next sign, okay? Uh, as you can see, it's right there as well. Uh, on the shirt. And I want to try this bad boy on. Let's try it on. Let's see. This is a extra large. And I'm going to sell it this Friday for 350. 300 to 350. I'm, I'm trying to depend on it. I think my artist jackets, I want to do it for 350. They take a lot of work and I put a lot into it. I also bleached the jacket. That was the first thing I did. I bleached the jacket. So all this white bleaching and stuff that you see wasn't on it at first. I like this jacket a lot. How do you feel about it? You love it? How does it look on? How does it look on? Yeah, like how does it look on body? Oh, great. Yeah, if you see somebody wearing it, I think it's I think it's sick. I think it's sick. Especially the face. The face is really good. Yeah, that's what I'm like, this is turn and then somebody like walking away, like with the highest in the room, like, yeah. like that shit's hard. That shit's hard. And then this, like all the colors that I have in, I try to incorporate all the colors of all his Travis Scott shoes. So you can wear it with any Travis Scott that you have. So, you know, that's, that's, this is one of my favorite pieces that I've done recently for myself and just uh, selling out, you know what I'm saying? I, I like this idea a lot. Uh, I got this jacket really cheap on a sale in Nashville a couple of weekends ago. So, it was actually last weekend. When it comes to the process of how I do things, it all depends on who's the jacket for. So first I try to figure out who's the jacket for. If it's for me, what do I want out of this piece? Do I want it to go with a specific um, palette of shoes or palette of color? Where do I want to wear it to? How do I want to wear it? Uh, if it's for somebody like somebody else, like for instance you, say if you wanted to order a jacket, uh, first I would I would have to figure out what type of jacket you would want. So first thing I would look at is your body type. Uh, where would I get the jacket from? There are about four or five places I usually get my jackets from. I have jackets where I get like heavier set jackets for like bigger people or winter jackets. And then of course I know places where you can get thinner jackets. So uh, for you, I think I would probably go for a thinner jacket, but I would get it bigger. That way you can wear it anytime. It would be a little air for you to have in the summer. And then if in the winter, you could put a hoodie under it. And then what you wanted to design on it. So. What would I put on the sleeves? Would I design one sleeve or two sleeves? Both sleeves. Would I design just the front, just the back? Um, my bigger jackets, I, I love to have bigger uh, designs on both sides, but like for a quick jacket, I can tell some people's style isn't always out there like mine's. So they just want like a big design on the back and a small design on the front. So those, I just put a neck sign on the front. This is, I call it a neck sign, the upside down question mark. Stands for not a question, neck. Uh, then, uh, yeah, it all, it all just depends on the style. And then as far as music, I can listen to any music. Yeah, once I get into a, a rhythm or a mood, um, I usually just throw it on shuffle. But if I am creating a specific uh, jacket, especially like musician jackets, I like to listen to the musician that I'm doing jacket. Like this is a Lil Uzi jacket. I was listening to Lil Uzi all the way through it when I did the Travis Scott jacket. Listen to Travis when I did the Future jacket. Listen to nothing but Future. 
stuff like that. Cause when you when you get into a specific theme, music can definitely persuade your mood, and um, it works faster too. And then I also like to design an entire jacket before I start it because you always have to start with the end in mind. Um, and people always ask me how do I get uh, so done so fast with my jacket is because I know exactly what I'm gonna do before I start. And um, I already know the processes of what to do when it comes to painting. Um, yeah, so I, I gather all the information that I need to about the person and from the person, what they want, if they like any ideas of what I have to throw into it. And then if they do, um, I gather it all, I write my notes down. Probably take about two days to do it. I'll just be sitting around thinking all day. My mom will be like, you okay? You something wrong with you? I'll be like, no, I'm good. I'm just thinking. And then I get to work. <laughs> I get to work and I'll be done with it by the day. Unless it needs like some stitching or I want to add extra pieces where I can like fabric glue it down, which I like to let sit overnight. So it's part of the process. So this Friday I'm releasing my first collection. It's called the NBA collection. Uh, I found uh, some jeans in a thrift store with all the old NBA patches on it. It was actually a thrift store on campus. Um, they were in there for $25. My mentee, Elijah, shout out to Elijah, Kush, Keyshawn, um, Iced Eli. Uh, he actually took me to the thrift store and was like, bro, it's these sick jeans in there. I low key want them. I seen them, I was like, you gonna cop them? He was like, nah, I ain't gonna cop them. I was like, I'm gonna end up copping them. I went in there every week. They were still in there for 25, 25, 25. And one day they was on the 599 rack. And I was like, okay, so are these 599? And she was like, she knows she knew me because I went in there almost every day to get scrap materials and stuff. Um, she was like, no, they're they're $10, they're down to $10, but I'll give them to you orange tag $10. Orange tag meant half off. So five dollars. So I ended up getting those jeans for five dollars. I sat on them, I bought them in like January. I didn't know um what I want to do on it, but I don't rush on any ideas. And then Corona happened, I ended up coming home. I made the Grizzly shirt, which you have. <laughs> it's the first NBA shirt that I made. Uh, and then I ended up making a Spurs one for a friend. And then something just encouraged me to paint uh, graphics to certain logos. And then I was like, man, I can do that for a couple of them and make it a collection. So I started making these one of one pieces. And then I realized that I could just take a picture of the graphic itself, Photoshop it on a shirt, um, printful and stuff like that and make money off of it so that's what I did I, and then I started making graphics too so a couple of them I painted myself this is Damian Lillard I bleached the shirt I painted Dame Lillard and this is the Portland Blazers sign now the thing with the jeans I'm very appreciative of them because they gave me the idea but I can't actually use the NBA logos on the shirts themselves because it's copyright only logo that I have the actual logo on it is a supersonic shirt because Supersonics are on the NBA team. So it's technically like licensing. But this is a shirt that I love. Uh, it's really sick, I like it. And it's just jean that I painted and ended up putting on the shirt behind the bleacher. I like it, it's cool. I think it'll turn some heads. You know, I gotta be honest with you. I, I, I have an unfair advantage when it comes to certain things. Uh, with this business, a lot of people make brands and then they have a lot of friends and support that, you know, they just blow up. And it's because they're, they're giving a, a service that's very wanted and needed in a specific market. Um, I am an economics major. So I, I try to study the markets. Um, and with me having a custom jacket brand and it being pricey, cause you know, I make the art so I get the pricey. It's, it's gonna take a while for it to like just just blow up unless it gets in the right hands. Um, but honestly, I'm very patient. I love the journey. You know, part of the journey is the beginning, the middle and the end. So, you know, I'm still in the beginning parts. I think the middle is where it gets really, really juicy. Um, but no, I don't think I don't think the support was wasn't there because people people knew me. I was at UT. I was a, a junior junior slash senior there. So I was known by a lot of the people that was about to graduate and those people really helped me with the lower classmen. And then me, myself, just being the guy I am, open, uh, you, being able to be able to be approached at all times, uh, I just gained attraction of other people that like to dress as well with 
because you know I just talk my my clothes talk for me. I didn't really talk, and then people will want to get to know me because of the clothes that I had on, and they figured out that I was wearing it, and you know, then I had the upside down question mark on, so people was like, "What is that? Like, that's something I ain't never seen before." I'm like, "It's mine, yeah." <laughs> so uh, I think it just turned a lot of heads. I had a, a good market to where I could finesse, and that's what I'm good at. I'm for good at finessing, so. I had the market at the PWI at University of Tennessee in Knoxville. And then with that, I would promote some of my posts. I ended up going to uh, SneakerCon LA and Atlanta. And that gave me some exposure. I was supposed to go to SneakerCon Cleveland the week of our spring break when everything got shut down for Corona. Uh, I also got a couple of WNBA players who was gonna fly me out to some games uh, because I didn't, I didn't supply them some pieces too. That was gonna be Liddy too. My whole summer's messed up. I was supposed to be going to Vegas this Friday. Vegas this Friday, yes. And I was supposed to be in Vegas when the collection dropped. And I was like, man, that, I'm gonna be so alive. And nah, no, nah. Corona said no. But as far as the support, nah, I don't ask anybody for support. I, I want my art to talk for itself, speak for itself. I did ask for support at first. I got to a point to where I didn't want to do it anymore because it was fake support. You know, people will only support me when I asked instead of you know, without me asking. And I want legit people to do it because they want to do it, not because I'm asking them, not because I'm hindering them or messing with them. I ain't, nah, I don't want to be a burden on anybody. So, you want to support me, you support me. I let my drip talk for itself. This bad boy right here. So, when I started last year, one of my first jackets, I actually have my first jacket uh, that I ever made. It's in the garage. But I think the second jacket I made was called a jean jean jacket. So. I wanted an original idea. I like things that are original. I haven't seen it before. Jean jeans and jean jean jackets. Uh, basically, it's just a play on words with DNA and jean strands on denim material. And this is the third jean jacket that I did. This is the third jean jean jacket. So the reason I made two was because uh, I had a friend who has a company called About Damn Time, ADT. Uh, he wanted to collab with me. He believed in me. He's one of the first few people that believed in me from a while, but that's because I was a freshman when he was in school and uh, I tried my best to support him and I, I never copped the piece though, but I did try to support him and spread awareness as much as I could. So he wanted to support me and he ended up copping the jacket. It was a collab. I painted the first jacket. I bought two jackets. I painted on the wrong jacket. It was the wrong size. So then I had to repaint that onto the other jacket that was his size. But then I just ended up making it another design. So I had two jean jean jackets, jean jacket one, jean jacket two. And then I just recently made uh, this one, maybe in March, it's in my jeans. Uh, if you look closely, I tie dyed the jean jacket. Uh, and then right here, I just have caught what you want. I got an extra pocket on the sleeve that I put in. It works. All my pockets are functional. And then I got caught what you want, CWYW. And then I got the three right there because it's the third jean jean jacket. I have a strand of DNA with caught what you want inside the strand of DNA. And then this is just a person with all of the, uh, what would you call it? Adamine, thiamine cytosine it's the ATG the the sequence yeah the sequence the DNA sequence yeah so this is this is that and this is also an extra large I think I'm gonna be selling this this Friday for about 250 250 this is a regular custom so I don't think I should bust anybody's head for it um, and I like the way it fit too I also cut the collar off I like the no collar look on this one and I like the oversized look Oh yeah, I forgot that I put the next sign right there too in a different jean, jean colors. But yeah, I like this one a lot. It's in my jeans, it is. It's in my jeans to drip, it's not a question. So yeah, those are probably my three favorite pieces right now. Listen, you won't get any progress until you start. Uh, you have to start somewhere. You know, everybody isn't the same. Uh, some brands blow up bigger than other brands. And some brands take time. And, you know, I like to say that the brands that take time are worth the time. Because once they blow up, then you'll have a strategic way of being able to do things. Don't write a business plan. Do not write a business plan when you first start. Some people are good at it. I wouldn't say it, it don't work for everybody, but 
I say you have to feel for the market. Uh, your first two years, you should not have a business plan. You should just go. The first year is for filling out the market. The second year, you should know what your market likes and then you should try to be strategic in the way that you give off your product so that it can sell. Then the third year, you should be very familiar with your audience and the people that's giving you consistent and persistent money. And then you form a business plan around that the money that you think is yours and guaranteed. Like, yeah, I know I can make this amount of money from this uh, type of audience. I'm going to use that money. I'm going to flip that, make something else with that and then get a team behind you. And once you can get your fans and followers basically paying your employees payroll, then you can start planning shit. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's the way to do it. A lot of people don't agree with me, but, um, and a lot of people, you know, have made it work the other way around um, with making a business plan. But I think in art, specifically with this type of stuff, you can't have a business plan. There's no, there's no type of plan. It's the question I ask myself every day, Stu. I ask myself that question every day. I'm like, what do I want to do with this? Where do I want to take it? You know, the, the whole purpose of it's not a question, it been my motto, is that I've always questioned myself. Uh, my talents, my worth, my beliefs. And then once I was in the hospital, I went back to back months. I was really, really sick. And I was just like, you know what? It's not a question. I, I need to stop doubting myself and just start believing in myself and putting myself out there. That's a lot of people's main problem is that they don't believe in themselves. But like I said, that's a question I ask myself every day. I want to, I think it's stepping stones to it. I would love to uh, be stylist for a plethora of different people just making them clothes, you know what I'm saying? I, that's why I started making graphics um, and then jackets too. Like jackets are my main thing. That's where I get my most profit, you know what I'm saying? That's where I can make my money. I can do my mo more creative uh, stuff there. I have creative freedom on some people's jackets. Um, I don't know if you watch a lot of like Eliante's uh, jury videos, but he's a, he's a jury guy. Uh, and a lot of people tell him like freestyle, go go crazy on, on their pieces of jewelry and he just goes crazy. I have a couple customers who let me do that with their jacket, they be like, just go freestyle and just do it. So I do have definitely a couple people in my, in my arsenal that I'm just personally styling for and then I want people to be all around the world. I always get people who say that their piece sparks conversation, that's what I want. I want everybody to be able to have a conversation off their, their piece. Uh, I just want to be recognized, man. I really don't even care about the fame. I just want the money and to be recognized. I understand that that sounds like fame, but when I say recognized, I just want people to know that, you know, Kelvin is that upside down question mark guy. You know what I'm saying? And that people will stop calling it upside down question mark, start calling it next sign. It might come with, with fame and shit like that, but I don't necessarily want that. I just want the money. Um, it would be cool to like have a job like Virgil Abloh where he's, you know, he had his own stuff and now he's designing for a little bit of time, but nah, I mean, that is, that's money. It's good money. But I, I would, I would love to, I don't know if I want a store either because I don't know what my store would include as far as like right now what I'm doing. I am trying to get into like designing pants and jogging suits and stuff like that. And for a store, I guess a storefront would be cool, but it wouldn't be more so a store. It'd be more so a studio. So like I would record myself painting jackets and stuff like that. People will come in and place their orders there. They can come pick them up if it's local. That'll be the place I would do my stuff where I would send it off. So more so I wouldn't want a, a store. I would probably just want a studio, a visible studio where people could come in, watch me paint if they needed to, uh, you know, and then I would have my merch around like graphics and stuff like that where they could buy stuff like that. But it wouldn't be a store, it would be my studio and people could just come in. It would be cool now if the store is studio style and then I had multiple studio style stores. That would be litty. But I feel like in order for that to work, I would have to travel to those bad boys a lot. Because then if I'm not there, then it would just be a store, right? <laughs> it would just be a store if I'm not there because I wouldn't be designer. You know, I never actually said that out loud. So that, that'd that be cool. Like, yeah, like having an actual studio store, like a studio thing. Yeah, K yeah KJ's in the back working on the piece now. And I'm all the way in Cali and they in Memphis. I'm like, yeah, KJ's back there right now working. It, it would also be cool if, I'm just talking now, if uh, 
if like I was designing a piece in one of the stores and it was like live streaming in all the stores. Shit would be cool. Shit would be cool, right? That's what I'm saying. I'm thinking about this now. It would be cool. Like they'd be like, yeah, KJ's back there designing right now. Can we go see him? No, no, you can't see him. No. He's Yeah, just just watch the live stream for sure. And then yeah, that's something I've always envisioned. I had a dream about it. Uh back in March. I just had a big dream. It was really crazy. It was I woke up and I was like, damn. That's crazy. But yeah. I, okay, yeah. I'ma say I'ma say that, that that's the end game. A studio. Storefront. Okay. For sure.